Hello. Welcome to all of my insider tips to help you design and cut your own cookie stencils. Hello. Oh my, it's playing on my computer. Oh, oh my other computer. Hold on. All right. Welcome, welcome. Um, I'm glad you guys are here. I know a lot of people have been excited about this, and actually I am too, because you know I love to design and cut cookie stencils. But even more, I love to teach people how to do that. Um, teaching is just something that I love to do. I was a teacher for about 20 years. I taught elementary school. And um, I stopped teaching, uh, I think, 12 years ago. And so this is my way to still keep teaching and helping people. Um, I want to welcome you guys and thank you for being here. This is uh, something that I love to share with people. And I just want to kind of go through some things with you so you can be familiar with um, how to design cookie stencils or what it takes, the machines that it takes, the software, and the materials that I use um, that work for me. Um, so, whoops. Sorry about that. I'm going to turn my phone off here. Um, so, let me start by telling you how I got started. Um, I uh, started decorating sugar cookies a couple of years ago, and maybe a little more than two years ago. And I started buying stencils with, because I loved using stencils. It made my decorating process go so much faster. And on occasion, I needed custom stencils, and so I ordered them. And I had to wait, you know, for them to come in the mail. And then um, one time I had an order and I didn't, I didn't think enough in time, ahead of time, to order the stencil for it to get to me. So I got to thinking, I thought, it's too bad I can't make my own stencils. And I thought, oh, I can try it. I'm a, I'm a big DIYer and I'll try everything. I'll see it and I think, oh, I can make that. I can make that. And then, you know. I end up making something, it takes me a long time, and I buy all the materials, but I didn't want to give up on the stencil thing because I knew I could do it. So I went to the store and bought one of those stencil burners and the stencil um, material at Hobby Lobby, and that was a big flop. There was no way I was going to learn to do it that way. Those That doesn't work, and I'm not steady-handed enough, I guess. Um, so I made a mess of some stencil material with that stencil burner or whatever, stencil cutter, I don't know what they call it. So um, I got to thinking and looking at the stencils that I had ordered, and I um, thought, you know, I used to have a Cricut machine a long time ago. I bet a Cricut would cut through this plastic. So my first Cricut that I had, and, and this is kind of a funny story, um, I went and bought it and thought, this is wonderful, I'm gonna love this thing. And I got it home and I could not figure out how to use it. It was like one of the first ones that came out a long time ago. So I gave it to my sister who figured it out right away and she still uses it um, for cutting paper. So I thought, okay, they're different now. You can use them on the, inter you can use the internet, you know, and you, they're, you have this little bitty screen to look at and type things into. So I went and bought a Cricut Explore Air. This is a newer one. Uh, this is a two, but I, I bought a Cricut Explore Let's see, the Air 1. Um, and I still have it, it still works wonderfully, but I wanted to buy the two, just so I'd have two machines. Um, so I started playing around with that software. I searched online, could find nothing to show me how to make cookie stencils, and I searched and searched. Um, so eventually I played around with the software and thought there's gotta be a Facebook group for people to learn how to use these machines. So I joined a couple of the Cricut groups and I ended up joining a, a stencil group online for, for cookie stencils. And there were some people in there that knew how to do things, but they're not a lot. And so I started learning my software, sharing what I was learning in this Facebook group, and people started asking me all these questions. And the more people asked me, the more I wanted to learn so I could help people. So that was kind of my mission, and I, I learned how to use the Cricut, which I love. And then people started asking me about the Cameo because they, they thought maybe I had a Cameo and I didn't. So I went and bought the Cameo and knew that software was going to be a little bit more of a challenge, but I had already learned Design Space, so I thought, well, I can learn the Silhouette software. And it did help me from knowing the Cricut Design Space software. It did help me learn, um, a, you know, learn to use the Cameo software 
I'll say a little bit quicker. Um, so that's how I got started. And then I thought, okay, I want to help people more. So I'm going to start a blog. Well, last summer I started a blog and each blog post took me forever to write because I had to take pictures and type all the directions. And I thought I was getting all these emails and I thought I need to be able to go back and forth with people and talk to them. So I'm just going to start a Facebook group. I may not have very many in it, but I don't care if I can help 10 people learn how to make stencils, then I'll feel good. And that group grew and grew and grew and got bigger and bigger. So that's all wonderful. And I help people every day in there and, and I really enjoy it. But that's how I got started. So the number one question that I get is, I don't know what machine to buy. I don't even know where to start. What do I, what do I need? So I'm going to try to answer those questions for, for new people. And then I also have tips for people who have you know been using their cutting machine for a long time but just don't know how to use, use it to cut stencils um, but they do have an advantage if they already know how to use the software and then you know I also have tons of resources and you guys um, if you haven't already gotten the document with the resources in it you will get that by email and there's lots of goodies in there we'll talk about that in just a little bit but let's talk about my machines behind me here um, this is the silhouette cameo uh, it's a cameo 3 and I'll just talk to you just for a minute about each machine and show you a little bit of the differences because I remember what, I couldn't figure out the difference in, in um, the blades and all that. So let me talk to you about that. Um, first, let me show you this. This is a Silhouette Cameo mat. And, um, well, that was the back of it actually. So the cover is blue and it comes off and you can, you, you put your stencil material on this, it's sticky. And you cut on this but my preference I, I don't like this clear mat because when I'm cutting a clear stencil it's hard for me to see so I did obviously you see I chopped this one up really good which I chop up a lot of my mats and they last forever though so what I like to do when I use my cameos I cut down a Cricut mat I lay this on a new Cricut mat and I trace around it and I cut my Cricut mat down and I use my Cricut mat that is cut down in my Cameo machine. I just like the Cricut mat better. And I'll show you that in just a minute and I'll tell you why. Um, so this machine, these are, this is a blade holder and this is the auto blade. Can you see that? Um, I use this one the most often. I will sometimes use the premium blade or deep cut blade depending on what material I'm cutting um, but I mostly use the auto blade and it automatically if you put your depth into the your blade depth into the software this thing will automatically go to that depth instead of you having to physically turn it on these blades see those numbers this turns and you set the depth there and in the software but this is called an auto blade and it slips right down in here and you lock that tight and you feed your mat in and you cut your stencil. Um, so this is a really nice feature too. You have this compartment here to store your tools and this is to store your um, blades and then they, it comes with a vinyl cutter and a blade chuck because those blades actually come apart and this is the tool that you use to do that. And this other end you use to remove the Bluetooth um, out of the machine if you need to change the, I think it's called a dongle or something like that. I, I'm not really technical. I can use my machines and I can use the software, but I may not know the exact terminology for everything. Um, okay, so this machine has a lid that just opens up and here's the panel. And this panel, um, you it, it's an LED and it lights up and you push the buttons to get your, your mat to load and unload and um, you have to update the firmware for this machine. And this machine does not run on the internet. It is a standalone program. So when you download the software, um, you don't have to have the internet to run it unless you are going to store information in the cloud. And that's when you store in your library in the cloud. Um, you have a library on your computer. You have the cloud where you can store files or you can store things on your computer it's confusing but I always store things on my computer I don't store in the cloud and I don't store in my library within the software but this is the LED panel that lights up um, 
So this software for the Cameo is a little more complicated than Design Space. Um, you can do a whole lot more designing in Silhouette Studio. Um, Cricut Design Space wants to do a lot of the work for you. So when you upload an SVG, you, um, you just upload it and Design Space cleans it up and puts it in the workspace for you. When you upload something into the Silhouette Studio software, you actually can manipulate the edit points. You can, it has the trace feature. If you trace, want to trace a JPEG um, or a PNG, you can trace them. You cannot trace in Cricut Design Space. Um, so the Silhouette Studio software is more advanced, but the good thing about it is you feel overwhelmed when you first look at the Silhouette Studio software, but you might have three tools or one tool available to you, but it's in three spots when you have the software open. So it's not as intimidating as it seems when you first start to learn it. And, you know, that's where I come in. I like to help um, because it can be very easily explained and it takes practice too. Um, so that's about the Cameo. Um, it's a great machine. I love this machine. I also love my Cricut. I can't tell you which one to buy, or I can't say one is better than the other, but I can tell you they both cut vinyl and paper extremely well. My Cameo, I have a harder time cutting the thick, thicker stencil material with my Cameo. I will cut the five mil or the 0 0.005 thickness stencil material with this very easily. But um, I save the cutting for the 0 0.007 thickness or seven mil stencil material on my Cricut. And I have also cut the 10 mil on my Cricut. It cuts through it great. But my Cameo would not cut that 10 mil material though. So, oh, and I wanted to tell you, you, if you want to ask me questions and have me answer questions, I'll do that at the end. I'll pull it up on my other screen because if I answer questions while I'm talking, I get sidetracked and can't remember what I was going to say. So you can ask me all the questions you want about this machine when I'm uh, toward the end. Okay, so let's talk about the Cricut machine for just a minute. Um, here is the open button. Now, the Maker is different than the Explore Air series. Um, it does not have the smart set dial here. When, you're, when you are setting cut settings um, on Silo in Silhouette Studio, you actually set the cut settings in the software and you tell the machine what to do. With Design Space, you can actually turn this dial, and I wish I could show this to you, but um, it has a setting for paper, vinyl, iron-on, light cardstock, cardstock, bonded fabric and poster board. So you have several settings right here built into this dial, or you can put it on custom. And if you put it on custom, then you can set a custom cut setting. When you're online, you can go in and set a custom cut setting. And I have a custom cut setting for my, um, my stencil material, and I have those cut settings on my blog, and that's at thecolorfulcookie.com. And if you just, in the search bar, in the search bar put cut settings, um, those will pop up for you, and, and it's step by step. And then also, um, on the colorfulcookie.com on my blog, there's another post about which machine should I buy. And so if you just type in which machine in the search bar, that post will pop up. And I have tutorials for the Cameo and also the Cricut in there as well. So this machine also, here's a place for your cartridges. So if you own cartridges, you can use them with this machine, you put them in right here. And you actually, you only have to put them in once, and then if you have, um, when you sign into the software, they're in your, it's called Cricut Access, is where all the images are within Cricut. Um, here's where you put in the cartridge, and um, here's where you store your blades, here's where you store your tools. This is a heavy, heavier machine. This machine is way heavier than this Cameo. This one is just a little more, I won't say flimsy, but it's just not as heavy as this one. And here's a place for tools in the top, and you can see I have all my tools in here. Um, so the Cricut blade, you can see this is the carriage right here. The Cricut blade looks like, I don't know if you guys can see me, it looks like this. Um, and, and some people wonder this too. Let me show you the difference here. This was always confusing for me. 
Okay, so this is the auto blade. The blade is up inside of there, and I mean, it's barely poking out. It barely has to be poking out to cut through anything. These things will slice you. They're very sharp. So this is the auto blade for the Cameo. This is the Cricut blade, and here's the difference. For a Cricut blade, you're actually, see, there's a, it's called a plunger right there. And you push this and you pull out the blade, being very careful, because if you're not, you'll slice your finger. I've done it. And I might do it again. Anyway, there's a magnet in there. And so that blade comes out. And here's what happens when you buy a blade. You buy a single blade. So this, this holder comes with your machine. And you always have this and you always use this. And you just buy replacement blades. So the Cameo, you actually buy this entire piece every time. You're buying this entire piece, okay? Um, oops, hold on, I dropped it. Okay, another blade that people like to use, um, well, I'll talk about that one in a minute. So this actually goes right down inside of here, and you just clamp that shut, and you have to make sure that is clamped. You feed your mat through here. You don't have an LED screen on this one. You just have a power button. You have a load button and a cut button on this one. Um, so let me talk about these tools for just a minute before I forget. When you buy a Cricut machine for cutting stencils, you just need the basic machine and the basic tools and a mat. That's all you need. You don't need all the vinyl. You don't need all the markers unless you're planning on getting into all of that, which that's wonderful. So, I mean, these machines can do wonderful things. It's amazing, I, it amazes me. But you will want one of these little spatulas. This comes in a toolkit, the scissors, the spatula, the weeding tool, see how sharp that is, tweezers. And then it also comes with this little scraper, okay? This is an embossing tool, I bought it separate. Um, this little scraper, which is handy, but my favorite is this big scraper. And I use this for my Cameo projects and my Cricut projects. This is an extra large scraper. Um, and the link to, I included the links to all this stuff in your resources download. All the stuff that I bought is in there, including the machines and also the stencil material. But so these are the tools that I would recommend, you know, sharp scissors, you need a weeding tool, um, you need a spatula, and you need a scraper, and a machine, and a mat, and I'll show you the mats. Um, whoops. These mats are Cricut mats, and they have three different mats. Um, silhouette. I believe they just have one mat. I don't know. I really, I only have the one that came from my machine, and then I started using Cricut mats. I just cut them down. So this blue is the light grip mat, and it's great at first until it starts to lose its stick, and you don't want that. When you cut a stencil, you want your stencil material to stick to the mat, or the little pieces will flip up, then get stuck under your blade, and then the rest of the stencil won't cut, and you have to recut it again. So you definitely want a sticky mat when you put your stencil material down. So this is the light grip, and you can see I have my stencil material on there. Um, and this is the green mat. This is just a regular grip, and it, it says up in the corner, standard grip. Um, I use this one um, a lot. I... Um, Mostly use this purple one though. And people say, wow, that's the strong grip. I'm like, yeah, I know. But what I do when I open this purple one, when it's brand new, it's super sticky. I like for my stencils to stay stuck to the mat though, because if, you, if they don't stay stuck, you have all kinds of problems. Um, so I will take this when I pull the cover off, because it comes with a clear cover, and I stick it against my clean t shirt and I kind of de sticky it a little bit. You can de-sticky it by putting it on your counter and picking it up a few times. But um, I prefer the purple mats when I cut my stencils. The green one is fine, the blue one is fine, but as soon as they start to lose the sticky, you know, you'll think, why isn't my machine cutting? Or why is that stuff getting stuck under the blade? Well, it's because your mat's not sticky enough. Um, so, and one other thing I want to point out, a lot of people struggle with, well, my machine won't cut this. It's not cutting. It's only cutting part of the way through. Or 
Anytime you have an issue with your machine cutting and not all the way through, you, you need to change your the depth of your blade, maybe. But typically what I have found is you really need to change your blade first because you need a sharp blade to cut stencils. I will say that with my Cricut blade, this is a this is a deep cut Cricut blade. This is the housing for the deep cut blade. It's black. The silver is for the um, German carbide blade and a standard blade. And I do recommend for Cricut users the German carbide blade. It lasts the longest. Like I know with my German carbide blade, I've probably cut a hundred stencils, and um, it's just starting to go dull. And as soon as they start to go dull, I switch them. It's not worth a headache to keep a, a blade in there that's going dull. So this is a deep cut blade and it's a, a you can't see that, but it's a sharper angle. And um, I don't really use this deep cut blade very often on occasion. Um, so I recommend a German carbide blade for the Cricut machine. It lasts the longest. Um, and you get the blade holder with the machine when you buy it and you get a blade. So. Um, I recommend Cricut mats for both machines. Just if you get a Cameo, cut the Cricut mat down to size. For the Cameo, I like the Auto Blade, which is this one. And um, I like the, um, well, the Premium, oh, sorry. Premium Blade's good too. Um, but I just like this because it automatically sets itself. Another blade that people like to use, but I have not mastered, is this little guy right here. It's called the CBO9 blade, and I bought two, thinking the first one was just a bad one, but it's actually operator error because I cannot get this set right to cut in my cameo. But if you have luck with the CBO9 blade, this is the way to go because it will cut the thicker stencil material with no problems, and it stays uh, sharp for a really long time. And I don't know if they're made out of German carbide or if they're like tungsten alloy. I'm not sure what they're made out of. But if you can master the CBO9 blade, I need you to teach me something because I can't figure it out. Okay, um, so let me put this back. The major differences in these machines. This one it has standalone software. You do not need the internet. This one, you need the internet. You download the software. Um, it's an app on your computer. You can also use the same app on your phone or on your iPad, but my eyes can't see the little bitty workspace on my phone or iPad. I have to work on my big iMac. Same way with this one. They have iOS apps. I think maybe an Android app now. Um, but you can design on your iPad or your phone as well. And this one is Bluetooth capable. However, my Bluetooth does not work and I've never been able to get it to work. So some people say theirs works perfectly. Bluetooth on my Cricut works every time, um, but it does take the internet. And you know, before Cricut upgraded to their um, latest version, I had so much trouble with crashing all the time. So, um, since their latest upgrade, I think I've maybe had one crash, but I use Chrome, and that's the recommended um, browser for Cricut Design Space is Chrome. If you have an issue, switch to Safari and see if that makes it better, but I've had way better luck with Chrome browser for my Cricut Design Space. Um, okay, let's see. That covers the machines, and then if I, and I probably left lots of things out, but you can ask me when I'm finished. Um, so let's talk about stencil material. Let me move my blades here. Oh, and I didn't show you, but these are the little blades that come with the CB09. And you can get a 30 degree angle, 45, and a 60 degree angle. So, but like I said, I have not mastered that blade. So I can't tell you which one of those is the best degree to use or angle. Okay, let's talk about stencil material. What I like to use is um, this. It comes from Amazon. I'm going to hold that close. It is called Graphics Duralar. It is clear plastic, and you can see it's 7 mil, 0 .007, right there on the bottom. It comes in 12 by 12 sheets, and there are 25 in this package. So I can get, if I make no mistakes in my blade and machine work every time perfectly, I can get 100 stencils out of this. Um, 
So the cost for this varies. Sometimes it's $10, sometimes it's $11, $12, and sometimes it's $9. So you just have to log into Amazon and, and see, you know, check the price. And the link is in that document that I gave you. This is the thicker stencil material. But this is what I prefer to use. I love the thicker stencil material. Way better than the five mil. It's just kind of thin. Um, so this is the Duralar that I use, and it is, um, I'll hold it up close so you can see this. Um, it's 0 .005. You can buy this at some Michael's stores, and I suggest that because you can use your 40% off coupon. This is the matte finish, and I'll show you what I mean by that. See, it's not clear. It's matte. You can see through it, but it's not clear. Um, so Duralar can be found at some Michaels, not all, but you can buy this on Amazon, and I believe you can buy it in um, 9 by 12 sheets or 11 by 14. Now, this is the Duralar that is the 0 .005, 5 mil, 25 sheets in both of these tablets. These are like a tablet. They come in tablet form, see? And there's 25 sheets in here, and I can cut two stencils out of each sheet. So this is clear Duralar, and I'll show you a stencil made out of it in just a minute. So um, again, you can get this at Michael's with a coupon, and I think this one is $16.99 at my Michael's, and this other one, the matte finish, is like, I don't know, cheaper. I think it's like $15.99. So, or one of them is more expensive than the other, just by a dollar or two. But use your coupon. Don't go without the coupon to Michael's or download the app on your phone. And also, when you ask people where the Duralar is in Michael's, the people that work there, they're like, huh, what is that? I don't know. So you really can't rely on them to help you find it. But there, if you have the Michael's app on your phone, you can put it in and it will tell you what aisle it's on and where it's located. But I will tell you it's on the drafting aisle by the drafting pencils and the drafting tools kind of down toward the bottom. It's been there in every Michael's I've been to that carries it because they don't all carry it. Um, this I want to show you. This is um, acetate that I ordered to try out. I'm trying to get a company to sell this to us. Um, this is a five mil and it actually cut terrific on both of my machines. I love this acetate. And it is, it is, um, ac it's, um, it's not mylar, it's, um, yeah, acetate. This sheet is thicker, and I loved it. It's, it's 0 0.0075 mil, um, and it's super thick. It's actually a lot thicker than the 7. And then this is also the material, and I cut it all up and used it, but uh, that I cut out of the 10 mil as well. And it's great material. It's kind of a matte finish, but you can see through it really well. So I'm, I'm talking to a company about offering that to us for our stencils. And acetate is... Um, it's a little more expensive, but it's good stuff. Um, okay, one other thing, stencil material, I want, I wanted to show you. Sometimes, um, maybe you don't want to order that, you want to try to cut a stencil on your machine, you're in a hurry. At Michael's, they have this clear poster board, and it works too, and it, it is thick, but it's soft, so your blade will cut through it on either machine. Um, let me see if I can show you the label for it. There you go. Well, that's backwards, but. Um, so this is at Michael's, and it is like plastic poster board. And it, it does work. It's good stuff. Um, and then one other thing you can use to cut your stencils out of is a report cover. This is kind of if you're in a jam and you run out of stencil material. This report cover, see that? This is just a report cover. And I always buy this on clearance at Target after school starts. But this also makes really good stencil material. It's, it's a little flimsy, but it works. So um, this is your resource guide that you got in your email that you can download. Lots of good stuff in here. And I'm constantly coming across new things and new resources. And um, let me, hold on, just a minute. I'm going to kind of point some things out here. You'll see in here, these are links to images. Uh, some of them are free. Most of them are the free page of websites, but lots of these websites have some really cute 
images that you can buy and they're not expensive. I mean, 99 cents or, you know, $2 or whatever, they're not expensive and they, they will work for your stencils. I also made a column for usage rights. Guys, copyright is really important to me. Um, so I try to use, well, I don't try, I do. I use things that either are not copyrighted, like on Pixabay, they're public domain or creative commons. Um, I don't, I don't like to copy someone else's work and I don't, you know, gosh, there's all kinds of stuff in the craft world right now about copyright. And it's just, it's just a lot of people taking other people's images and they should not be taking someone's hard work. But, um, anyway, so that's why I listed the usage rights. If you want to check to see if it's for commercial use or for personal use, and you can click on that link and you can see that as well. And most of those sites, you can buy a commercial license for next to nothing. Um, the other thing that's included in here, gosh, there's still tons of, oh, font resources, yeah. Lots of links for font resources there for you to use. And then here is the list of materials, all these stencil materials, the machines and the tools and everything that I use. I'm not gonna recommend anything to you that I don't use myself or haven't tried successfully to use. So lots of links in there. And then um, one other thing I wanted to show you, oops, it's this Kevin guy. This is a free download um, at thecolorfulcookieco.com. That's my online shop for uh, stencil downloads where you can download a stencil and cut it on your machine. This is a, uh, in the freebie section and it's a cutting chart. And if you're gonna design stencils, this is good to have handy. You can look at this and kind of get a visual of how wide a line is or how big a circle is um, when you're designing stencils. And this is always helpful to me. So I made one for you guys. Okay. Um, next thing I wanted to talk to you about was actually stencils. Um, different kinds of stencils. You know, some, some people, they don't quite understand how you know, they know, they've seen stencils on cookies, but they don't really understand how a stencil works when you design it. Um, so when you download a stencil from me, you get this for storage, and the stencil goes right on top of it, and you store it, and you can, you know, see easily what it is. So this is just a background stencil. This is cut from the 7 mil um, Girl R, and, you know, it's kind of thick. And what I, what I love and what I use all the time, I can't live without, is my Stencil Genie. And this Stencil Genie, um, your stencil fits right inside of here. It's, sand it's sandwiched in between, see? Sandwiched right there with magnets, which I love my Genie and my Genie Scraper. These things are, you, you hardly have any mess ups when you use these two things. This holds your stencil in place. Some people like to use magnets. Um, to hold their stencil in place. Some people don't use anything because they're steady handed, but that is not me. If I just try to hold my stencil with nothing, I mess it up every time with a cookie. Um, so that stencil you can see is made out of the matte Dural R, and this is a Cricut Access image. Um, and I'll talk about Cricut Access in just a little bit. Um, but this is uh, the matte Dural R. This is the clear Dural R. Okay, so see, these are a soccer ball stencil. You can make, um, here's a football stencil. And then if you don't want it in a square and you want it for a cupcake or you'd rather have a round stencil, you can just put it in a round frame. So those are just one part stencils. Let's talk about two part stencils. Um, so here is the printable that comes with the stencils that I designed. And you can see this stencil, here's part, part one, here's part two. And I designed them so that when they sit on top of each other, they line up perfectly. Um, and so, but the printable has the, you know, has everything together so I can just store them together like this. So this is a two part stencil. You would airbrush this one first and then spray roll icing over this one if you wanted some dimension or airbrush both layers, it's up to you. Um, here's another two-part stencil. It is uh, Christmas lights. And you can see there's a line for the, the, there's a stencil for the electric line and a stencil for the bulbs. So here is the stencil for the electric lines. 
So what I did was airbrush this on, and you know what? I used green because, you know, sometimes those bulbs have a green electric cord. And then here are the bulbs, and when I line them up, turn this, they line up perfectly. And that's a, that's a, that's not hard to do. You think it is, but it's not once you're shown how to do it. Um, so, th for example, here's another. Now, this is not a two-part. This is two individual stencils, and this is cut from the Matt Duralar. But if I were to airbrush this in, like, a yellow sheen on my Easter cookie and then um, scrape royal icing over the crosses, see, it's two separate stencils, but I can use them to make one really pretty cookie and maybe do another cookie that has the words, he is risen or something, which I have a stencil to show you out of that, too. Um, this is another stencil. It's it's plaid. It's, it's spring plaid. Hold on. So there's what it looks like. I've got three different sets of lines, and I have three different. So this is a three-part, three different sets of lines. But when I line them up, oops, hold on. Maybe. You can't tell because I did this in Matt Durlar, so when I held it up, you could see it. But it, it makes that pretty plaid that you saw in this picture. And you can vary these. You can turn them diagonal. I mean, there's a zillion things you can do with stripes. Okay. Um, now, I want to show you the difference in, um, well, here's a dual double-ended stencil with clouds and grass on the bottom. Those are super easy to make. Um, okay, let me show you the difference. Okay, and let's talk about vinyl for just a minute. Um, I know vinyl is a super popular thing, uh, and people love it. I don't love, I don't love the vinyl because, um, I don't like weeding it and messing with it. It tests my patience, and I've got the patience of Job, actually. But, um, I want to show you the difference. Okay. So, because some people don't, in their mind, they can't figure out what the difference is. When you make a regular stencil, you add bridges. If I were not, if, if I didn't have all these little places here, see these little places that are solid in the letter? Those are bridges. And they have to be there to keep this word in the stencil. It connects them or bridges them. So, I go in and I add these bridges to this word. Let me hold it closer. See? Now... In a vinyl stencil, let me hold this one up separate. There are no bridges. Oh, you held on. I've got black paper. That's why I brought black paper in there. There are no bridges in this stencil. See? Because this is adhesive, well, this is actually heat transfer vinyl. Um, and so it's just like making a heat transfer for a t-shirt, a, a transfer for a t-shirt. Very same thing. Only you're not putting the HDB on a t-shirt, you're putting it on, scre on screen. And I'll show you the, the screen here. It's mesh screen. I'll show you that in a minute. So let me show you the difference. I'm going to hold this up because some people, they, they don't understand the difference. Okay, this one has no bridges. And it's made with heat transfer vinyl and it's ironed onto screen. And I'll say silk screen because it's just like the silk screening um, that you would do on a t-shirt, only, you know, not the chemicals. It's actually, you're using royal icing to screen. Um, and so the one over here, this is actually made on the Duralar, and you can see the bridges in there hold it in place. This one doesn't need bridges because it gets ironed on to the screen, and it holds everything in place. See the loop inside of this, the F, and the loop inside of the H at the top, and the loop, or the, you know, the loop in the A, those things are called counters. And if you don't bridge them in a stencil like this, they'll fall out. Do you see the bridge in the top of the H and the two bridges in the A? And I've got a bridge in the loop of the F and I have a bridge down here in the bottom. You have to bridge it to keep it intact because this is not ironed or stuck to anything. I want to keep that word in there. This one does not need any bridges because it gets ironed on and it, it sticks. So the, that's the difference in vinyl and a plastic stencil. I call it traditional, and I, and I say traditional and screen, because um, the vinyl can be HTV or it can be adhesive-backed vinyl. And I'll show you the screen. 
this is the screen and it's made out of polyester. So um, it's very, very, very tight weaved. Hold on, there you go. Uh, it's 110 weave is what it is. And I've heard people can use 80 weave and it works fine too, but I have not tried the 80 weave. I buy the 110 weave. And when you buy it, you get this huge piece of screen. I've cut mine into smaller sections and I tie it because it goes haywire and it gets everywhere. I mean, it just, you can't fold it back up. So I roll mine, but this is screen material. I think, I don't, I don't know if they call it silk screen anymore. It's not silk, but um, it is polyester. And the link is in your resource guide too. Um, okay, so that's the screen. And then I will show you the vinyl. Oops. Here's the HTV. See, it's clear. And that's why the stencil you can see through because this is clear HTV. And this HTV, um, you can't tell it, but one side is the backing and the other side is the HTV, but it is clear, or I think it may be called transparent. So this is what you're cutting your design out of, unbridged, just a regular design, and then you iron it to the screen. Now, um, I will say this, if you want to scrape on the screen side, you have to mirror your image. If you want to scrape on the vinyl side, you do not mirror your image, and you'll learn that eventually. Um, because once you do it a few times the way you don't like it, you think, oh, i got to remember to do that the other way, and you'll remember. Okay, so here's another stencil. This is made out of screen. I made this for my friend, um, Karen. She always says, life is good, life is good, which I love that because life is good. And so you can see no bridges in there. See the loop in the F, the loop in the O's, the D, no bridges in that one, okay? And I made a couple of these silk screens on uh, colored HTV just so you could see them. See, I made one that says he is risen. Ooh, that's shiny. I'm not sure we we'll see that or not. I made one that says he is risen. I just had some extra gold. And this would go with my cross and my sun rays. Um, these I actually made out of adhesive back vinyl. And this is 651. There is a new vinyl that is um, six, uh, 671 that's supposed to be really sticky and uh, longer lasting than the 651, but I've had fine success with 651, and I usually, I order the, um, I think it's, I think you call it Oracle or Oracle 651, but this is a two-part. So I cut this just out of green because it's a, it's gonna be March. So here's the kiss me part, and this is the lips. So when this is finished, you'll have the kiss me and the lips right in the middle. So I would do this in um, black and I do the lips in green for St. Patrick's Day. So this is adhesive back vinyl. Now let me tell you about that because it's different than heat transfer vinyl. Adhesive back vinyl uh, has a sticky back. So it's a little bit different process when you transfer it. You have to transfer the design to the silk screen. And that's really hard to explain it's better for you to actually see it done. Um, it is hard to explain. So this adhesive vinyl, you don't need any bridges in this either because it's sticky and it actually sticks to the screen. And the royal icing, when you scrape, it goes right through that screen under the cooking. It makes very, it looks very nice. Um, and I'll tell you, sometimes I love these little spatulas from the Dollar Tree. I love the Dollar Tree. Um, so these little spatulas are great scrapers for your, um, for your royal icing too. There's another vinyl stencil I made at Halloween. I wanted to try out this um, clear, this glitter vinyl, and I didn't use it on the cookie because it has glitter, but I wanted to try to see if I could see through it, and I can't. But, um, okay, let me see. Oh, so other things you can do. Um, you can make cake toppers. This is cardstock, really cute. Cake stencils. Um, I do make cake stencils on occasion, and I plan on, you know, doing more of that in the future, but I've been so consumed by cookie stencils. You just, instead of putting it in a square stencil frame, you make a big round stencil frame and make your image bigger in the center. Um, all right. Let's see here. Your document I've already talked about. Let me look at my notes. Um, oh, I was going to show you a couple other things, too. 
these are just things I wanted to mention that are handy. I bought this at the Dollar Tree, you know, my favorite place. I will set this on a dish towel or one of those, you know, um, um, oh, I can't remember what you call them, but you set this on your dish towel and your stencils stack perfectly in here to dry. I use this all the time. I love it. Cheap and easy, $1. <laughs> That's my kind of purchase. Another thing that I buy at the Dollar Tree is chopping mats. And these come in very handy. Now, I could not cut this on my Cameo machine, but my Cricut machine did cut it. What I do is I take an, if I have a clip art that I want to make a cookie for, then I will put that, I'll upload that um, design into either Design Space or Silhouette Studio. And I actually um, just use the outline or the contour of the clip art, and I cut it out of this chopping mat. And you can see where I've cut out of this one. Um, and here's what it looks like from the Dollar Tree. And if you're going to hand cut your dough and you don't have a, a cookie cutter, this is perfect. It's really thick. And this is a perfect template for hand cutting your cookie dough from some clip art you found online that you like or that you bought or it's, it's just perfect. And so, and I can show you how to do that too. Um, okay, one last thing. I want to show you um, my stencil storage container. I got this at Joann's and you can see all of my stencils that I've either bought, because I bought a lot of stencils too, or designed, they're all in here and I have them behind um, dividers by month and by theme. Um, and I did buy this at Joann, but you can get containers like this anywhere that will work. And that's a handy storage. I used to keep them in um, scrapbook, you know, picture things where you put them in the sleeves, but then I was flipping through them all the time. And this, I just thumbed through it like, kind of like a Rolodex. So, okay. Um, let me see here. Uh, make sure I showed you everything. I, and I can't wait to see your questions because then I can hit things that I forgot. But I want to I want to talk to you while you're here about something else. Um, you guys know I love designing cookie stencils and I love teaching people how. It's my favorite thing to do. Um, and that's why I'm starting the Colorful Cookie Club membership. And it's it is going to be an awesome thing. And I always try to do more than what what people expect. But I intend to teach people how to cut and design their own stencils. There are I've been uploading all kinds of videos on each tool for Cricut Design Space and Silhouette Studio, each tool in the software. It's all in order. And instead of trying to answer people's questions and it being all over the place, this is going to be in order and you can learn step by step. So along with like all kinds of videos for each tool and how to use the machine, there will also be videos each month centered around a monthly theme that are step by step. Do this, do this, do this, and it's all in a video tutorial, easy to follow. And when the, by the time you're done, you'll have three stencils design and cut. And I'll also be offering in the club a um, uh, a free stencil every month. You'll get that, and then 20% off in at the online shop, thecolorfulcookieco.com, and um, also a private Facebook group, so that I can really help people and answer questions one on one in this group with. You know, people who are in this group are going to be in there and be serious and want to learn and and ask me questions and not be afraid to ask. I answer all questions. I always say there is no, the only dumb question is the one that doesn't get asked. If you don't ask questions, you'll never learn. So I'm a person who asks all kinds of questions. I, and I don't, I usually don't worry about what it, people think about that because that's the only way I can learn. My dad would always say, do you have any more questions, sis? Because I ask so many questions, and I still do today. That's how you learn. So my plan is to offer tons of video tutorials on the tools, which I've already got tons of them recorded, and I've got lots more to do. Um, video theme stencils each month, um, at least three tutorials for designing a, a stencils around the theme. A Facebook group where we can um, keep in touch. I'll do a Facebook Live every week so that I can communicate with you directly and answer specific questions. So you'll have access to me in that way. And then also the 20% in the shop and a free stencil every month. Guys, that that's less, well, the cost 
is going to be less than the cost of lunch or two physical stencils if you ordered them. So it's $9.99 a month, but if you buy a year, it's $97, so you get two months free. If you buy six months worth um, of the subscription, then you get one month free. But if you buy the months individually, it's $9.99 a month. But it will the cart will be open for a week after today. And you can join uh, for the next week at $9.99 a month. And then the cart closes. And um, I won't open the club membership back up again until later in the summer or early in the fall because I want to make sure that I'm taking care of the people that are in the group and not, you know, not bringing in new members, trying to answer those questions all over again. So I will open it again um, late summer, early fall. So this cart for this membership will be open for a week for you to buy at $9.99 a month because in the future when I open it up, it'll, it'll be $14.99 a month. I just, I want to do this, this um, special pricing now for people who are really serious and want to get in here and learn because that's what I'm all about is helping you learn and I want, I want people who want to learn. It makes my job fun. So, um, okay, we need to do we need to do the giveaway, and I need to answer your questions. So, let me see if I can pull up your questions here on my. I wonder. Oh, hey, look, I can. Technology amazes me. You know, kind of like that oops email that went out today that said live in an hour, but I'm I'm hoping that people will come back and watch the replay. Okay. Let's see. I'm only seeing. Let me type hello and see if you guys can see it. Let me know. Okay. Um, let's see. Hello, hello, hello. I see some hellos here. Um, yes, I'm looking forward to the club too. Yes, it will be on replay. So if anybody has missed it, this or if your friends ask, it's it's going to be on replay and you'll, you'll get an email with a link to the replay. It will be there. So don't worry about that. Um, hello. Yes, Karen, life is good. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh, you're so sweet. Um, Sheila, your husband's name is showing. Okay, Sheila. Great. Let's see. Oh, the, the, hand, the hand cutting, the mat, I know, this is awesome. So if you don't want to have to use a stencil burner or your scissors to cut a template, use your machine, it's easy. And if you're on the fence about which machine, um, I can answer more questions. You can either shoot me an email, you can join the club, I can um, answer all of your questions there. Uh, I know, I love, I, I am excited about this. I, I love stencils. I love designing stencils. It's it's just so addictive, and it kind of takes over your life. It's fun. I can make any stencil I want now, but at first, oh, my gosh, I will tell you, I struggled. I banged my head on my desk. I even cried a few times, which I rarely cry, but I did because it was frustrating, and I want to save you guys from that. So, oh, that mat works for rolling out the dough? Oh, good idea on the chopping mat. Yay. Okay. Oh, the day the initial club will be open. It opens um, tonight or tomorrow, and it is open for uh, a week. So you'll need to join in the next uh, seven days. Hi, Kelly, Sandra, Kathy. Let's see. I'm trying to scroll down through here, guys. I'm sorry. Let's see what happens when I use my arrow key. Nope, nothing. Um... Oh, Kathy's at work. I'm excited too. I, guys, the club is going to be great. And I always go the extra mile. There's even going to be more than probably what I've listed. But, you know, I want to make sure I can follow through with it and um, do everything that I've stated so far. I know I can do that. But the extra things that I want to do that I have in mind, they're going to be fun too. You can, oh, you can sign up now. Okay. Megan says, my wonderful helper, Megan, who has worked so hard and two other ladies have worked so hard to help me set all this up because I'm telling you, technology just blows my mind sometimes. Yes. Um, I might have missed this. Can the original blade on the Cricut cut the zero zero? Yes. The Cricut blade can cut that seven mil, no problem. 
no problem at all, but you need my cut settings, which are listed on my blog. Um, uh, Karen, I can teach you how to make a two-part stencil. I can teach you how to make a four-part stencil. I can teach you how to make any stencil. Um, can you use Silhouette software to make an SVG for Cricut? Yes, and I do it all the time. That is the only way that I do it. I've got it down pat, and I can share that with you too, because it's not hard once you learn, once you taught. Graphics, oh yeah, the graphics acetate. Um, it cuts beautiful stencils. My problem is that it won't lay flat since it wants to roll. You know what, um, Wesleyan? That is the graphics uh, 0 .005 or 75 acetate, and I didn't have that problem. So maybe it's the way they packaged it and sent it to you. Mine came flat, and you can probably request that. Can you make images in Adobe and then import? Oh, sorry, hold on. And then import them. I think it said. Ah, come on. Oh, and then import them into Cricut software easily. Yes. And if you're proficient at Illustrator, you've got it made. I'm learning Illustrator right now. Because, and I'm in the same boat that you guys are in when you're trying to learn Design Space and Silhouette Studio. I'm trying to learn Illustrator. And uh, so I know exactly how it feels to try and learn something and not know what to do next. So yes, you can definitely do that. Adobe Illustrator is, my, it's, it's wonderful. I love it. Yeah, and there's a link. Megan's posting a link for you to sign up for the club. Oh, you're welcome, Susan. You know what? I love helping people. I do. I love it. I enjoy it. it it's what, you know, my kids are grown. My baby's graduating. My other baby graduated from college and has a job. My husband's busy with his job. And this is my thing, and I love to do it. And I love to share with you guys. And I, I did it for so long, just, you know, and then it became such a full-time job, like around the clock. And then I opened my shop because people would say, can you, can you just design this and, and I'll buy it from you. I'll buy the file. And I'd be like, no, I'll just give it to you. you know, so I was doing all this designing and stuff. And I was like, I need to open a shop so people can just log in and buy what they want. And that's why I did that. That's not my first priority though. My first priority is teaching people. Okay. Let's see. Um, Oh, graphics background turn cookier. Katie, you got it made. Made in the shade. You just need to know how to transfer all your knowledge into cookie stencils. Yes, I can help you do that. Um, info for the resources. Uh, you know what, Sandra? You should have gotten emails, several emails announcing the webinar, and you should have gotten an email with the link to the resources today. And so check your junk mail and see if it's there. And if it's not, shoot me an email and I can send that to you. Um, okay, let me go back down here. For some reason, my computer, every time somebody makes a comment, it rolls upward. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Oh, if I had to choose one machine, which would it be? People ask me that all the time. <gasps> you know what? Where did that comment go? Um, okay, if I had to choose one machine, which would it be? Let me tell you so you can make a choice. I don't get paid by either company. I love both machines. Um, Cricut uh, customer service, I... They're, I have had excellent luck with them. They, you know, they're, they're really good customer service. Silhouette Studio has good customer service or had, um, they went to chat only or email. And so you can't talk to anybody now, which is frustrating because you're sitting there waiting for an answer and you have to wait on them to email you back or, you know, chat back. So that's a little frustrating. Um, I love that this machine cuts through that thick material, no problem whatsoever. But I know people who have a machine that cuts through this, a cameo machine that cuts through the thick material fine. Mine does not. Um, and I have tried every way possible. But it cuts through the, the five mil perfectly. It's just the seven mil I struggle with on my cameo. Um, I like that 
you know, this is online. The software is online. It doesn't crash anymore. The software is easier to learn. Cricut Design Space likes to do a lot of the work for you. When you upload an image, you can upload an SVG, which is a scalable vector graphic. And that means you can make it bigger or smaller and it never loses its properties. It always stays. A, a, a JPEG file um, is made up of little bitty boxes or squares. And when you, you know, if you've ever expanded one of those up, it loses its shape and it's got all these, you know, jagged lines around it. Um, but uh, an SVG is a scalable vector graphic. It is a cut file. Um, so you can upload cut files into both software if, now that is the one important thing I need to say. When you buy Silhouette Studio, you um, get the free basic version. And you can download either of these free versions for Design Space or Silhouette Studio at free and get the basic edition for um, both. Um, you need to upgrade to Designer Edition to be able to download and upload SVGs into Silhouette Studio software. Cricut, you can download SVGs. You just you have the software when you buy the machine. Um, Cricut does have a subscription that you can pay for each, uh, I think it's, you can buy per year, uh, I think it's $7.99 a month, but you have access to like 30,000 images, and I do use a lot of Cricut images. Um, now, I don't sell stencils made with those images because that's um, against their copyright. When I make stencils to sell in my shop, I have to be really careful. It's different than if I were making stencils to make cookies to sell. So the rules for me are very different than they are for you making stencils to sell cookies with or for personal use. You know, you can use any image for that if it's personal. You're not making any money. But Cricut Access, you pay for monthly or yearly, and it is a great subscription. So if you were to say, knowing what I know about both of these machines, which one would I buy? I'm telling you, you'll be happy with either one. They both did the job. It's just that if you like thicker stencil material, this cuts it way better. If you like the five mil, you're fine with this one. But then some people will tell you, well, I can cut the seven mil on my, on my Cameo, but um, maybe that's just me. So, oh, and you can learn both those softwares, especially if you have help. And I'm showing you step-by-step -step what to do. Um, Yay, oh, yay. Okay, is there, oh, is there a free version and a paid version? Yes, you need the paid version of Silhouette Studio. Like, the Designer Edition is awesome. It, it's worth the money. And you know what? Swing Design will have uh, sales all the time. And sometimes it gets, it, it, it's on sale and it's really cheap and you can't go wrong. Now, I have the Business Edition, so I can create SVG files. And that's how I transfer it to Cricut Design Space. Um, let me go down. Oh, you're watching me while you're heat sealing 300 cookies. Wow. Oh, Karen, thank you. You're always so sweet. Um, somebody, what did somebody ask me a question about and I had a thought, but I don't think I answered it. Oh, Kelly, you cut the seven mil, no issue. I know. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. A lot of people can't, but there are a few people I know that can. Okay. Yep. Share your cut settings. Uh, they're probably the same as mine. I don't know. I've tried everything. Um, oh, Susan just joined. Yay! Okay, you will get better at this. I promise I will have you cutting stencils very quickly. Um, okay, I'm trying to scroll down here. And the giveaway. All right, let's do that. Let me pull. I've got to share my screen with you. Let's do the giveaway. That's all the questions I saw. Um, I need to share my screen. I got to figure out how to do that. Megan, how do I share my screen? I can't remember. I may have it written down. Okay. Tons of names that I need to... Um, where is share screen? Oh, nope. Yes, here it is. All right. I am going to share my screen with you. Let me close this down. Oh. Mm. Sorry, guys. Oh, 
Oh, I need to open the window. <laughs> okay. All right, I've already got the names in here. I'm gonna share my screen with you. Get this winner announced. Some lucky winner is going to, um, some lucky winner is going to um, have a ton of stencils to download and cut. All right, so what I did was I went through here and I entered all the names of everyone who registered for the webinar. So there's a ton in here. So all I have to do is pick one and this will be the results. So let's see who the winner is. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate that. You know, I love this and I love my cookie friends. Okay, let's pick one, here we go. Kelly Ramos. Kelly Ramos, are you doing a dance? <laughs> Are you doing a dance, Kelly? <laughs> and to everyone else, I wish everyone could win. I do. But when you join the club, you're going to learn how to do this. I promise I will have you cutting stencils in no time. I will give you the help that you need. And um, I'm just, I love it. So I'm glad you guys joined me tonight. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.